All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders, great millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and sincerity, and salutations and blessings to the hopeful lit, believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. It's your brother Dawadai here at the Church of Birmingham, Alabama. Coming next to you with another lesson. Lord willing, it's edifying. And there's certain spirits that the Lord is going to have reserved for various calamities. Okay? Why? Because they despise Yahweh Bashawashah. They despise the word. Alright? That he sent forth to bring you salvation. And this is to two-thirds of Jake. Because you constantly going after the way of your oppressor. Alright? You stand up on perverseness. Alright? And, and it's a penalty for that. You know, you reap what you sow. The things that you put out are the things you're going to receive back. Alright? You know, certain Jake, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to have reservations for death. You're going to be sitting at the table, you know, reserved for you. Okay? Matter of fact, I have this word queued up, reservation, in an edamon, right? It says, the act of reserving or keeping back, right? It says, keep back, save up, retain, preserve. So certain spirits, all right, are going to be preserved. For those uh, calamities, you know, Boosie, right? Well, he thumbed his nose at the Lord, all right? Charged him white, okay? You know, uh, who else can we have? Or who else can we name? Because these are all examples of two-thirds, right? Oh, uh, this guy, um, yeah, Geno Jennings, man, all right? He's been... Preserve, all right. Lest he repent, and the way they're going, don't seem like they're going to repent. They've been reserved for destruction, all right. And the ultimate destruction is what those ICBM missiles. Okay, it says to keep save. <laughs> You're saving the Lord is saving you for calamities, man. Preserve, protect. He's protecting you. To fear ultimately, uh, what does the scripture say? Uh, death by pain? Let's get that. Because that's when you're going to realize who your Bashar Shah is, man. After you die. Right? You don't have to fear the Lord now. Because you, you subscribe to the ways of Esau Edom, man. All right? Who, who definitely don't have to fear the Lord. You see? Let's go to Second Ezra chapter 9. And <clears throat> you know what? <laughs> let's start at seven. It says, matter of fact, let's do this. All right. Second Ezra chapter nine and verse seven. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape. By his works, yeah, escape, man. All right, implying that you're in the middle of danger. All right, uh, scripture say uh, it's a step between uh, me and death. I think that's King David, All right? One step, okay. But certain spirits are going to be preserved, all right, from death, from the calamities, from the famine, right? It says, and by faith. Whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So that's the separation. All right. Certain spirits were sanctified by Yahweh by Shaosha from the beginning to see his salvation. Right. And we'll pray we of that lot. And then. The other lot, right? Then shall they be in pitiful case, 
which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully, see, despitefully shall dwell in torments. So you heard the word, all right, and you thought it was insignificant. You despised it, right? For such as in their life have received benefits from who? Esau, even the so-called white man. And have not known me. And that's a capital offense, not knowing you. How about you? I mean, all right. If you don't know your power, how can you fear your power? You see? And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despise it see and that's what's going to ultimately lead to your death not understanding not having discernment all right you got this guy charleston white i'm a nigga baby i was born a nigga baby i'm a die nigga baby and you all nigga babies well he's in gross darkness man all right and that's why he ultimately don't understand when judgment comes down all right, those spirits like that, all right, a real nigga, as they say, are going to be reserved, all right, for the FEMA camps, okay, for the famine. They're ultimately going to reserve to receive that karagma or, or, or reserve for World War Three, man, okay? And if you make it through all that, you're going to be reserved for the missiles, see? It says the same, see, the same must know it. After death by pain, that's when you ultimately going to get it. After you die, right? Let's go to Second Peter. <clears throat> Second Peter, chapter two. It started. Um, started verse five. It says, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Yeah, Noah had the testimony of Yahweh Shah, man, which is what? The spirit of prophecy. You go in that word preacher, all right, means to say before, all right? And when you're speaking things beforehand, that's prophecy, right? Bringing the in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, see? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live un excuse me, unto those that after should live ungodly. Yeah. That was an example of how not to live. Right? And Esau, he promotes that shit. And you'll have Jake says, as long as that ain't me, well, guess what? You're in the same house with that mindset. All right. You're conform to this world. All right. Instead of speaking out against the abomination. Right. She was to tell us in Ezekiel 9 and 4 that uh, for the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination in the midst thereof, guess what? Those are the ones that's going to have that tawah, that exemption from judgment. Right. And on the other hand, the ones that's not crying out. The ones that's having a covering, all right, but not a Yahweh by spirit, you're going to be likened unto the other nations, man. Namely, Esau, Edom. What is that? Um, uh, let's get that. Sirach, I believe. Chapter 13. Let's get that. Ain't going to be likened unto this damn devil, all right, wearing his same uniform, all right, reserved for his same punishment okay ecclesiastes chapter 13 and verse 1 he that touch of pitch shall be the foul therewith and he that have fellowship with a proud man see have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him so ultimately if you're not crying out for the abomination you're wearing the same uniform you're going along to get along and you how about y'all saying with that shit man Okay, back in Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. And delivered just Lot. Yeah, Lot was a just man, right? Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See that? 
for that unright for that excuse me for that righteous man dwelling among them seeing and hearing vex he seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds it says the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations right and to reserve the unjust until the day of punishment excuse me until the day of judgment to be punished right you're going to be reserved and those judgments all right are going to be in various ways again you could die out of famine man right you can die of the teeth of wild beasts newly created creatures right you can die of the uh, sedition the insurrection right the race wars the class wars world war three right you can receive that karagma all right and, and and be reserved for the missiles so you're going to be reserved all right for various punishments from your high by shower shot right let's go to the book of job <clears throat> Yeah, there's no getting away. What you put out is what you're going to receive, right? So this is Job 21. You see the header, Job says the Most High will deal with the wicked. See that? And how Bashar Shah is going to deal with the wicked. And we're going to jump around. All right. Uh, let's start at... Mm, Let's start at verse 7. It says, Wherefore do the wicked live and become old? Yeah, are they mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. Yeah, they're not in uh, as trouble as other men. They leave their substance to their babes, right? They're able to... Uh, engineer a soft landing for their children it says their houses are safe from fear neither is the rod of the most high upon them yeah they say that uh the lord is with them right that's why they continue in the way that they are right don't the scriptures say um sentence let's get that sentence against an evil work um yeah, so oh, that's so right. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. It says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. See that? So they don't believe it's a judgment for the things that they've done, they don't believe that they're going to be repaid. For what they sent out. And two thirds of Jake see that. And, and they they are envious at the foolish. Alright. They end up starting to trying to chase the bag like Esau. Not knowing all this shit is coming to an end. Right. They don't have the discernment. It says. Though a sinner. Do evil. A hundred times. And his days be prolonged. Yeah we just read in Job. That their offspring is before their eyes. Right, paraphrasing, the seed is before them. They feel that they're established, right? It says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it, is, it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him, right? That's who it's going to be well with, all right? Those that are able to discern time and judgment, right? It says, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Yeah, Jake is trusted in a shadow because he feareth not before the Most High. See, so ultimately, it, it all goes back to fear. All right. And you going after the way of Esau, meaning what? You're not fearing your high about Shabbat Shabbat. Okay. It says, Job 21 and 9, their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of the Most High upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, 
their cow, calveth, and casteth not her calf. Yeah, they're in prosperity, right? That's why they're fully setting them to continue in the evil that they're doing. All right? They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbre and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth. And in a moment go down to the grave. They ain't having no. Uh, they're not troubled as other men. Right. Therefore they say unto the most high. Depart from us. And two thirds of Jake. Right along with that mindset. Depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. And ultimately you're not desiring. The knowledge of the ways you have by Shah Shah is going to lead to your death. You see? What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray to Him? See that? And that's the mindset of two thirds, man. Right along with Esau Edom, their daddy. But it say, uh, Yahweh Shah said, You are like your father, the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. Well, that's two thirds of Jake. The Lord was talking to Israelites, man. Okay, let's jump down. Okay, to verse twenty-nine. They have not. It's slacky. It says, "Have ye not asked them? They go by the way, and do you not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. See." They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. So two thirds of Jake, all right, they they fall after the ways of Esau Edom. You're gonna be brought forth to the day of wrath, man. Scripture say, um, all the proud, yeah, let's get that, and all that do wickedly shall be what stubble. <laughs> yeah, and that's that ultimate, that ultimate reservation, <laughs> reservations for fire. Right? Oh, slack you. This is Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly. See that? Who is the proud? Esau Edom, the so called white man. Who is all they that do wickedly? Two thirds of Jake. All right? It's going to be caught up in a destruction. It says, shall be stubble. That's something you use to kindle fire, man. And the day that cometh, excuse me, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, see, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. See that? And that's plain. You're not coming back into power anymore. All right? You're not going to be established anymore on the earth. Okay? And two thirds of Jake, they just following after his ways, man. And again, you're uh, in the house of Esau, and you have a table reserved. All right, you sitting down eating good, drinking that Babylon juice, thinking everything is going to continue as it were. All right, and then sudden destruction. Right? Let's go to Second Peter. Back to Second Peter, uh, chapter three. Right. Second Peter three and three, you see the coming day of the Lord. It says, knowing this first, that shall that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Yeah, and you go into that word scoffer. One of the definitions there is a false prophet, a false teacher, man. Okay, anybody that presents you with a doctrine. That's outside of the will of your by shower shot is a false teacher. This guy charged in white. Presenting you a doctrine of being a a a a, a good nigga, <laughs> as he put it. Alright? He presents you with a doctrine of, of prospering prospering in this world. Right? Well he's a false teacher. You got this guy Geno Jennings, right? What the scriptures say, uh, broad is the way that leadeth unto death, and many there be that go in there, right? So these are examples, all right, 
uh, of 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 scoffers in the last days walking after their own lust right and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation and that's jake not having the sermon because the mississippi river drying up all right the colorado river drying up these are the calamities that the lord is bringing upon this place man and it's just not here it's various way various places around the world okay <clears throat> excuse me all right we have uh the rhine river drying up in uh germany okay you have uh various rivers in china drying up so those are examples of things changing they're not the same as as from creation right it says for this they are willingly ignorant of yeah you're in the dark right it says that by the word of the most high the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby that then was excuse me whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished see that was what the flood we read about that earlier but the heavens and the earth which are now reserved by the same word see by the same word Salakia. Let me read this again. But the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. See that? So you're being kept, all right, to fill those certain calamities, man. All right? You have a reservation with death basically all right why because you don't want to hearken to your how about shall be shot okay let's go here let's go to sarah chapter 12 ecclesiastes ecclesiasticus chapter 12 and verse 6 it says for the most high hate of sinners right you had these wacky tacky Christians say he hate the sin, he don't hate the hate the person. Well, this says contrary, man. For the most high hate of sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. And keep of them, see, and keep of them against the mighty day of their punishment. And again, that, that day of your punishment is gonna come in various ways, man. Okay? You might make it through the famine. Right? You might make it through World War Three. Right? You might make it through the insurrection and, and the uh, and the sedition. Right? Folks invading one another for the lack of bread. You might make it through that just to be reserved for the missiles, man. Okay? So it's going to be reservations for death. And, and the death is going to come in, in a various plethora of ways, man. All right? Those things are waiting for you. Matter of fact, what is that? Um, yeah, it's waiting on you to get the when you when you make a reservation. All right, the restaurant waits for you to arrive, <laughs> and you and and your uh, your name is given, and you sit down at the seat. Right, well, two thirds of Jake, you're gonna sit down at the seat of death, man. Point blank, period. It's waiting on you to get there. Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord power. And evil. And only evil. Behold is come. See that's all that's reserved for this place man. But Jake don't have discernment. Alright to realize what time he in. It says. An end is come. The end is come. It watch up for thee. See. <laughs> Behold, it is come. So those reservations that you're allotted to is just waiting for you to get there, man. All right? Scriptures tell you that in the day of your death. Yeah, let's get that. Well, I think it's still in Ecclesiasticus. 
of Sarah, chapter 11. So in the day of your death, the Lord is going to give you your just desserts, man. That reward. Um, Is it 11? Bear with me. Yeah, Sarah or Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 26. For it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. See that? Whatever you put out, that's what you're going to receive. So if you've been sowing to the spirit in the day that you were supposed to die. The Lord may preserve you. All right. Through the see, through the said perils. And in contrast, all right, in the day of your death. The Lord is going to reward you for those things you put out. All right. So uh, you put sown wickedness. You're going to read that back. What is that? Uh, Romans 6 and 23. The wages of sin is death. So whatever you put out, that's what you're going to get back, man. Okay. Let's go to Jude. Jude is only one chapter. Right. <clears throat> and we'll start at verse 6, right? It says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, who are those angels? The Israelites, man, right? We fell away from our heritage, okay? But left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. What are those everlasting chains? These bodies, man. All right. It says under darkness, meaning uh, two thirds of Jake is going to continue to be in the dark. The light of Yahweh by Shabbat Shah have not shined unto them. Right. It says unto the judgment of the great day. See. So two thirds are, are going to be reserved in these bodies to receive the things that they have done. man. Verse seven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going about strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, again, if you're not speaking out against this wickedness that Esau has pushed forth in the earth, you're going to be likened unto him, man. You're going to be just like this devil. You're going to be wearing the same uniform, right? Scriptures tell us about a, a covering that two-thirds cover with not the spirit of your high by shower shy. So ultimately, you don't have that tawa, man, all right, that exemption from judgment. And you're going to be liking it to him, so you're going to receive that same punishment. Matter of fact, did we get that? Uh, we may have read it. Let's read it again. So Rock chapter 13, right? So Rock chapter 13 and verse 1. He that touch of pitch shall be the foul therewith, and he that have fellowship with the proud man shall be like unto him. Right, let's get this word fellowship. It's a simple Google definition. So you're going to be liking unto him, man. You're wearing that same uniform, Right? open it up fellowship fellowship friendly association see that especially with people who shares one's interest so you share the same interest of your high by shot uh, like it of esau edom two-thirds do right they're conformed to this world right some of the similar words companionship right commodity Com uh, let's see if we can get this word pronounced. Camaraderie. Camaraderie, right? You have camaraderie with this damn devil, right? It says friendship. Oh, scriptures say, uh, friendship with the world is enmity with the Most High, right? It says association, closeness. See that? <laughs> Solidarity. So you standing with Esau, man. All right, you made Esau your foundation. All right, which is what? Quicksand. All right, it's going to sink. 
when those floods of missiles come to destroy this place. Right? Why? Because you don't want to trust any high by shot, shot, man. You want to continue to trust in this goddamn devil. Well, you're going to be likened unto him. You're going to be reserved for fire. Right? Let's close it out here. Staying in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 5. Starting at verse 7. It says, Make no tearing to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. I want to look at this word security. It says, in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. Right? Simple Google definition. Let's look it up. It says, the state of being free from danger or threat. Yeah, man, you, you stand upon Esau. You think you're free from danger or threat. It says, a thing deposited. No. It said we get some similar words. Right? Certainty, safety, reliability. Yeah, you're relying on Esau, man. Dependability. Let's look at this. You're depending on this fucking devil. It says the quality of being trustworthy and reliable. So you're relying on Esau. It's going to lead to your death. Ultimately. Right? So Rock chapter 5 and verse 7 again. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And it's going to come forth in, in various ways. Right? And in thy security... Thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. See that? Set not thy heart upon goods unjustly gotten. For they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. See that? And again, those calamities, those uh, plagues are going to come in various ways, man. All right? You're going to be reserved for death. Reservations for death. Right? That's going to be it for the lesson. Lord willing, has been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders, great millstone. Lord willing, come next year with another lesson. Till the next time, I say Shalom.